Good morning, and welcome to a very special episode on The Angry Astronaut. As of right now, as I'm recording this, I have 78 subscribers to go before I hit that incredible, momentous 100K. I've added 4,000 new subscribers over the past 28 days, actually more than 4,000. Welcome to all of my new viewers, and thank you so much for subscribing, and thanks so much to my supporters for making all of this happen. You guys are fantastic, and now it's time for a celebration. Yeah, even though I haven't quite hit that 100k, it is my hope that this video will take me over the hump, or that I may even be over the hump by the time I actually release the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Okay, so a lot of you may be saying, come on, Angry, are you really going to celebrate this with a discussion of alien megastructures or a Death Star? I mean, you're getting way out into left field here. Well, first of all, those of you who have followed my channel for a very long period of time probably know that I cover these sorts of things regularly. Not all that frequently, but I do cover them, and I only cover them if we have found a phenomena in the universe that all natural explanations have fallen flat with, and there have been many, many attempts to provide a natural explanation for what we are seeing, and all that remains is an artificial one. But don't worry, I've got several more videos coming in conjunction with the 100K celebration that have nothing to do with aliens. Going to be talking about Boeing, going to be talking about Blue Origin, going to be talking about SLS, all of my favorite topics to slam on. So don't worry, guys. All all of my more conventional stuff is coming soon. But before I get started on this, the so-called Death Star alien megastructure, and yes, I'm going to explain why I think this is a valid explanation and description for what we are seeing, we need to talk about something called the Aliens of the Gap concept. Now, this is simply a way of saying that once all natural explanations have fallen flat, well, we can always have aliens provide the explanation and say that, well, since we've never found an alien civilization, civilization before. They're theoretically capable of anything godlike, if you will. And so what we are seeing, although impossible for natural phenomena to produce, well, an extremely advanced technological society, they could do it. And let me tell you how. But here's the problem with all of that. The same principle applies when we try to use a deity to explain these sorts of things. For example, how could God have destroyed the world in a huge deluge when there isn't enough water on Earth to cover up every bit of land on this planet, even if you melted all the polar ice caps and everything? And how do you repopulate the Earth? And how do you uh, repopulate not only with humans, but also with all of the animal life with just two specimens of every species. Well, obviously, that's completely impossible, especially if it only happened five or 6,000 years ago or something, as many Christian organizations, and not just Christian, other religious organizations would claim. But of course, the explanation always is, well, it's God. You know, God's all-powerful. God can do anything. And that's the end of the explanation. That is not scientific. That is not valid. And that is not something that should be taken seriously. So too, should the aliens of the gap fallacy. We cannot try to pigeonhole any sort of incredibly advanced superhuman technology into our solution and say, well, it's aliens, they're millions of years ahead of us, they can do whatever they want, and so therefore this is the explanation. It's better for us to try to come up with an explanation that we technologically can understand and at least 
theorize as being possible, something that our civilization might be capable of in the next one to two thousand years rather than millions of years in the future, and see whether or not a technological solution that fits those criteria might actually work. And yes, the alien death star theory does fit in this particular situation. And of course, I'm going to tell you about the other natural explanations for this very strange star that we have detected recently, HD 139139, and you can make your up your own mind. This is the story of what is probably the most mysterious star in the entire universe, and that is something that's very difficult to claim. But I'll tell you, there are no explanations that make any sense except for an artificial alien megastructure of titanic proportions, which in itself is very difficult to explain. Now, most of you probably know that our method of detecting exoplanets, for the most part, involves searching for some kind of unusual dimming of the target star. Sometimes it also involves looking for some sort of telltale wobble, which would be caused by a very large planet. But what if we're looking for smaller planets? Oftentimes, we look for shadows passing in front of the star that cause some kind of characteristic dimming. And this is the sort of thing that we have detected over and over again now, with 5,332 confirmed exoplanets having been detected at the time of this recording. And as you can see, when an exoplanet passes in front of its parent star, it creates a dip in the light curve very much like a heartbeat, something that we would expect to see on a hospital monitor of some kind. But unlike a heartbeat, the rhythm of planetary orbits never changes. We see the same dip at the same time during the same observational period over and over again with every exoplanet. However, this was not the case with HD 139139. At first, it appeared that we had another very rich planetary system with lots of planets. We're talking no less than 28 light dips being created by objects that appeared to be about double the size of our planet. In fact, strangely similar in size. In fact, all but two of these dips are practically identical, with the other two dips being approximately double the size of the other 26. Very strange indeed, but it gets even stranger. According to the study, quote, the unusual aspect of these dips is that they exhibit no periodicity, and their arrival times could just as well have been produced by a random number generator. We have done a number of data quality tests to ascertain that these dips are of astrophysical origin, and while we cannot be absolutely certain that this is so, they have all the hallmarks of astrophysical variability on one of two possible host stars, a likely bound pair in the photometric aperture. So 28 objects orbiting a star very similar to our own, both in terms of size and also temperature, a G-class main sequence star, but one of the differences is this is a binary system, which produces some possible explanations, which we'll get to in just a moment. One of the explanations that was presented is the idea that this might be the same objects transiting across both stars therefore creating multiple light dips, in which case there would be only 14 objects instead of 28. This, of course, still creates a very improbable planetary system with 13 planets roughly the same size and the 14th about double the size. But in theory, possible, but this would not create so many random transits. So what's another possibility? Well, of course, we always fall back on dust. Astronomers love falling back on dust anytime they can't explain an astronomical phenomena, and oftentimes it's just simply dismissed as being dust, and that's the end of the conversation, as was the case with Tabby Star. However, this seems to be extremely unlikely, and the study emits it. Quote, each transit-like event might be attributed to a single asteroid with dusty effluence transiting the host star. 
The difficulty with such a scenario include, one, the fact that almost all of the transit-like events have rather similar depths, and two, it is doubtful that asteroids in a wide range of orbits would all be at just the right equilibrium temperature to produce copious dust emissions. These both point to the problem with numerous independent bodies all having just the right properties to emit very nearly the same amounts of dust. Really, that explanation nation seems to be impossible, and dust, this time, is safely dismissed as an explanation. The authors of the study examined many other unusual possibilities, such as an eccentric planet orbit about one star in a close binary, a P-type circumbinary planet, dipper-like activity where one of the stars might dip in brightness from time to time, or short-lived star spots, in which case you would have star spots roughly the same size spontaneously coming into existence and then mysteriously vanishing just just as quickly. All of these explanations fall flat. Either they should create some sort of periodicity, which does not exist with this star, or they are simply too unlikely to be considered possible, such as star spots that are exactly the same size every time and seem to jump into existence one moment and vanish the next. None of these things seem to be very likely possibilities. So once all of these natural natural explanations have been dismissed, in my opinion, we need to start exploring the artificial. Now, this, of course, is something that the authors of the study did not do. Instead, they made comments about how we see things at first that we don't understand. We look to aliens as an explanation, and then later on, we discover that it was something natural after all. However, I would argue that the reverse happened with Tabby Star and quite a number of other stars located in the same vicinity. At first, we thought we had a natural explanation for Tabby Star, and then further observations debunked these theories, and currently, we still don't have a valid natural explanation for the phenomena taking place at Tabby Star. On the contrary, we have instead detected similar light dips happening in a cluster of stars tightly packed around Tabby Star that all seem to have the same characteristics, and these are characteristics Characteristics that are not demonstrated by stars that are far more distant. That in itself is very strange, and by the way, if you want to learn more about that, I have that particular video linked at the end of this video. So, if we are looking at something artificial here, what is it? Well, since the title of this video is talking about alien death stars, I'll bet you can probably guess that I'm talking about an artificial planet, or a whole bunch of them, or possibly one or two artificial planets that move and change their orbital configuration, making us think that what we're seeing is large numbers of objects, while what we're actually seeing is a smaller number of objects that change their orbital configuration and pass in front of the star at an unusual periodicity, making us think that we're seeing larger numbers of objects in the solar system in question. It's hard to tell which, but it's more likely, in my opinion, that we would be looking at smaller numbers of very large artificial planets, about double the size of our planet, than 26 or 28 separate structures. Regardless of the number of objects that we're actually seeing, though, all of them must be in motion in order to create this strange periodicity. It means that these artificial planets, as colossal as they are, must somehow also be mobile. But that is theoretically possible. Keep in mind that an object of this size would be collecting about a third of a million terawatts of power. In other words, 346 thousand trillion watts. That's an insane amount of energy and could be used for a variety of different purposes to power an extremely advanced civilization. What sort of uses might these aliens have in mind? Well, one in particular was postulated by Dr. Avi Loeb, who of course has proposed these kinds of theories in the past. A water-cooled structure roughly double the size of our planet could accelerate a million tons worth of mass to 
percent of the speed of light if it was using this energy in a focused radio beam to push a radio sail to that kind of velocity. I'm imagining a vast interstellar civilization that regularly pushes massive cargo ships or colonization ships or perhaps exploration vessels from one star to another. You would, of course, also need similar structures at the receiving end in order to decelerate light sails of this size. And of course, any ships arriving in the system would also need to be decelerated, which would possibly explain why these artificial planets keep changing their location, keep changing their orbits, because they need to arrive at a different trajectory in order to provide the necessary radio beam at the right angle in order to decelerate an arriving ship. Now that, of course, could be one of a number of different applications for structures of this size capable of producing such a colossal amount of energy, and also keep in mind how much energy our 21st century civilization consumes, and compare that to a civilization many millennia, or perhaps millions of years ahead of us. As we have already seen, it requires all of the energy of one of these objects just to accelerate a single ship, to 50% of the speed of light. If they're sending out a lot of these ships, it would require, of course, a lot of these artificial planets just to generate the energy to travel between stars. And who knows what other kinds of energy requirements a massive civilization with a colossal population might require. Keep in mind also that an advanced civilization might have an extremely long lifespan and the population to go with it which means such a colossal population would also require enormous amounts of energy. Now, the act of moving an artificial planet around seems kind of impossible, even with that huge amount of energy, but only if we're talking about a solid object. If it's a hollow planet, its mass will be correspondingly less, and it would be a lot easier to move around, especially with the enormous amount of energy such an object would collect every single day. Although the notion of mobile artificial planets may seem a bit far-fetched, in my opinion, it's a lot more plausible than something like a Dyson Sphere or a Dyson Swarm, which would require a whole lot more raw materials and a whole lot more energy in order to create. Most importantly, we can conceive of such a structure, maybe not with today's technology, but with certainly technology that we might have available in the next thousand years or so, and an alien civilization need not be that much more advanced than us in order to create something like this. That having been said, there is another rather disturbing possibility. These kinds of objects could actually, in theory, serve a far more sinister purpose, very much like the Death Star that we are a lot more familiar with. Instead of accelerating a million tons worth of mass to 50% of the speed of light, something like this could accelerate a smaller object object to 99.9% .9 of the speed of light and direct that object at a planet that this civilization might want to eliminate for whatever reasons. This relativistic missile would be virtually undetectable. After all, light would barely arrive ahead of it and would, of course, be unstoppable. And upon impacting our planet, at the very least, it would scour the entire surface of all life, if not cracking the entire planet in into fragments. Something like this is utterly horrifying, and yet, theoretically, within the technological capability of not only some sort of hostile alien force in the future, but also our own civilization at some point in our future. The fact that the human species may one day wield this kind of destructive power is a terrifying thought, to say the least, and it kind of makes me hope that we eventually find a very natural and innovative offensive explanation for what we are seeing at HD 139 and 139.
design and not an alien Death Star. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Thank you so much for getting me to this 100,000 subscriber milestone, or at least I hope we get there very soon. And also, please check the description for various ways to support my content as I make my way towards 200,000 subscribers in the future. And as always, guys, stay angry about space.